it's just about six o'clock. And since we're not waiting, oh, there it is, six o'clock, all right. Um, so we're not waiting for PAC because we're recording, right? right? So I'd like to call this meeting of the Lunenburg School Committee to order at six o'clock. Our first order of business is the long preamble. So if you would like to start, Dr. Burnham. I will. As a preliminary matter, this is Dr. Burnham, Superintendent of Schools. I will do a roll call to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Chair, Mrs. Carol Ashambo. Yes. Vice Chair, Mr. Brian Leighton. Yes. Secretary, Ms. Laura Kelly. Yes. Uh, Ms. Sophie Shapiro. Yes. And Mr. Uh, Tony Scolombrini. Yes. And we do not have our student representative with us this evening, or at least not yet. Um, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Recording secretary, Ms. Susan Summers. Yes. Business manager, Mr. Michael Cassidy. Yes. And I'll turn it back over to you, Mrs. Archambault. All righty. In accordance with the requirements <laughs> of the open meeting law, please be advised that this meeting is being recorded and will be broadcast over the Lunenburg Public Access Channel and streaming on Facebook Live at a later time. And this meeting of the Lunenburg School Committee is being conducted remotely. In accordance with the governor's orders suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, public meetings may be conducted remotely. The order, which you can find posted on the town website on the COVID-19 Information Center page, access through the town manager's webpage, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For this meeting, the Lunenburg School Committee is convening by telephone conference, video conference, via Zoom app, Facebook Live, as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. For Zoom meetings, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and that you take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Um, let me continue, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to assure accurate meeting minutes. I, Carol Ashambo, the chair, will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, question, or motions. Please hold until your name is called and remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. And each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by roll call vote. Um, our first item on the agenda this evening is executive session to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining or contract negotiations. So do I have a motion to adjourn into um, executive session? Um, Ms. Shapiro. I'll make a motion to move into executive session. Thank you. And Ms. Kelly? I will second that. Thank you. And a roll call vote, please. Mr. Scolombrini? Yes. Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Archambo? Yes. OK. <clears throat> Kate, 
Can you join?
Carol, you're muted. Not if I don't unmute. Um, I'll try that again. I think we are back and now I'm unmuted and we can continue with our open session. And we're going to start that with the chair's report. First, I would like to thank the Lunenburg Municipal Building Committee for inviting the school committee and Dr. Burnham to their meeting on Monday, May 16th. We appreciate the open communication and look forward to working with this committee and seeking the best solution to Lunenburg's municipal space problems. But I will leave the content of the discussion to Mr. Layton and, and his committee report later. But I did want to thank Mr. Jeffries for the invitation. I'd also like to thank the citizens of Lunenburg for passing our school budget as part of the omnibus budget, omnibus budget at town meeting on May 7th, as well as approving the capital plan. Many thanks to the town manager, the select board, the finance committee, and so many others for the hours of preparation that go into town meeting. So that's what I have for a chair's report, and it's time for public comment. Um, I want to remind the public that the first public comment section is for agenda items only. The second public comment section is open to any topic within the scope of authority of the school committee. Public comments about individual students are prohibited to protect the privacy of the student per state and federal law. We have a 10 minute public comment session limited to three minutes per person. Are there any public comments? I don't see any public comments. Nor do I. All right, then we will continue on to review and approve the minutes of the regular session on May 4th, 2022. Um, do I have any comments about those minutes? I'll just offer that um, there are some spelling corrections for the names of the students that will have to be made, but um, we'll take care of that if assuming that everything else is all set. Okay. Then do I have a motion to approve those minutes, Mr. Leighton? I'll make a motion to approve the May 4th, 2022 minutes. And Ms. Shapiro? I'll second that motion. All righty, and a roll call vote. Mr. Schoolenbrini? Yes. Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Can I approve even though I wasn't attending that? Is that still fine? Yeah. I, I would recommend I'll abstain. I'll abstain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Leighton? Yes. And Mrs. Ashambo. I will abstain as well as I was not at most of the meeting. All right. So approve item line item transfers. I don't think I saw any. Did I see any? No. No, I didn't think so. Then the superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone. I'll start off with the COVID update. Um, our positivity rate in Lunenburg is at 6.34%. Uh, and the state overall is at 9.12%. Case numbers ending last week uh, were 19. And as of today, this week we have 16. The vaccination rates remain unchanged. The primary school is still at 49%, the elementary school at 58%, middle school 64, and the high school 74. Um, I wanted to let everyone know that we have um, begun our new uh, pilot with the education research and review team. Um, we're piloting this model with staff at the high school and at the primary school. These teams will be reviewing a body of research on a topic of interest to them, analyzing the findings and reviewing our current practice, as well as making some recommendations for any change to practice based on the, on the research. Um, these teacher leaders will also be earning professional development credit uh, because they will be learning from uh, a review of all this research. The teams met last week uh, to kick off um, this work. 
Both teams created a list of topics that they would like to explore, and they also prioritized that list. The high school team uh, has prioritized taking a look at grading practices, and the primary school team has um, prioritized looking at the effective use of data and data cycles. The teams are going to spend some time this summer searching databases of peer-reviewed journals, and they will gather articles and review them this summer. Uh, and they will begin an analysis of the body of research when uh, school uh, reopens this fall. There's another new program. The Beginner Band Week uh, is scheduled to run from June 21st through the 24th at the Middle High School. This band week will be open to approximately 30 to 35 incoming fifth and sixth grade students running approximately two hours each day. Um, this program will be geared toward providing basic instruction on two wind instruments of each student's choice. Our hope is that the students will feel successful with some of the basics of these instruments as they learn how to make sounds, uh, play a few notes, and ultimately after two days, the hope is that they'll be able to play a short song. Um, the overarching goal for the camp uh, is to try to build enthusiasm about the band program and to foster excitement about making music with others. Um, the ACE program has initiated a, a new venture. They are now running a coffee cart called Common Grounds. The Common Grounds coffee cart is available at each school one day each week. They sell coffee, tea, muffins, and bagels. Uh, it's a great work experience for the for our A students, um, but I really do think that the teachers and staff in the schools uh, enjoy having this treat once a week. Um, so it's going well. A few uh, reminders for the month of May, our senior department awards will be tomorrow. The seniors last day is on the 20th, uh, so Friday. Town elections, uh, as well as the high school prom, will be on the 21st. And we have a Memorial Day ceremony at Veterans Memorial Park at 10 a.m. on the 30th. Uh, upcoming um, in the near term here in June, our next school committee meeting will be on June 1st, as well as the senior motorcade and the senior breakfast. Um, the community scholarship night for our, for our students will be on June 2nd, and graduation will be on the 4th. And that's all I have for you this evening. All right, thank you very much. Those are all very interesting things and it's very exciting, the idea of the um, research groups that are looking into those articles. And I, I really like the topics that they chose. Sound very interesting. I'm thank excited you. for that work too. All right, so we're going on to, um, we have no student representative yet. I presume. So we're going to go on to old business, the PTO use of the logo for the fundraiser. So the PTO has reached out again to um, obtain approval for use of the logo. This time they're looking to uh, use the logo on cups that will be part of an upcoming fundraiser. And this evening we have Mandy Gilman who can give you a little bit more information about that plan. Hi, everyone. Hi. Um, hi. Um, my name is Mandy Gilman. I have a son who's in first grade and a child who will be, he's in preschool right now, and I'm involved with the PTO. Um, we are very excited. You guys gave us permission to use the logo. We may had some stickers made. There are going to be a logo for, you know, people use on their Yetis and water bottles and stuff we're going to sell. And another idea we had is we were working at Hollis Hills Farms and working with them to offer a kid-friendly beverage in a cup that um, will change colors when it's cold. Um, and we thought it would be really appealing to have the Blue Knight logo on it. So we're hoping you won't mind uh, and approve us using the Blue Knight logo on uh, the cups as well for that event. If anyone has any questions, glad to, we haven't decided how much exactly we're gonna sell them for yet, but we're working with Hollis Hills because they're gonna help sponsor the lemonade and then give us a donation based on that and um, you know, help use some of their workforce to actually fill the cups and sell the cups for us. So I think it's a win-win on both accounts, so. Terrific, does anybody have any questions for Mandy? 
doesn't look like anybody has any questions. I think you explained it well. Um, so the color changing cups, they can whip those up quickly. <laughs> yep. Yep. Dentist, one of our, uh, yeah. one of our, uh, other mothers on the PTO is very good at sourcing things. That's part of her regular job. So she's got someone who can print the cups for us. As long as we get permission tonight, we can use them on the 11th and hope you guys will all come. It's going to be fun. It's a kickoff to summer event and the superintendent and some other folks are doing some good raffle prizes for us. So um, anyways, I won't take up any more of your time, but thank you. <laughs> all righty, Mr. School and Brini. What's the event on the 11th? Oh. So we're having a, uh, it's a kickoff to summer. It's at four o'clock at Hollis Hills Farm. And we're raising money for the PTO, for the scholarship fund. And then we give money to every school each year, a donation that the principals can use for their own, you know, basically whatever they need in the schools, the, in that school that year. Um, and so we're gonna have raffle prizes. We're gonna sell hopefully these cups. We're doing stickers face painting, and there'll be a band and food that Hollis Hills always has um, as well. All right, and you said it starts at four? Four o'clock, yep. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Leighton. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you for your, your service at the PTO, and thank you for the PTO for doing this. Uh, I did have a question more for Dr. Burnham, though. Is this something that we could also advertise out with the, the principal's notes, the emails, the weekly emails, too? Absolutely. Um, I believe I included it in the last uh, highlights and spotlights as well, um, but we will certainly be able to push out some um, reminders for sure. Thank you. We have a flyer uh, that we'll, we'll have a more formal flyer that we've really finalized. Um, and for anyone who wants to share, some of the prizes include a student will get to ride to school in the police car with Hank is one of our raffle prizes. Uh, <laughs> library is helping us. Uh, Dr. Burnham's going to host some kids for lunch, principal for the day at the primary school. So we have some other actual in-person, like, you know, physical prizes too, but I actually think some of the more experienced prizes will be the most fun. <laughs> well, thank you. And thank you for all the work that the PTO does. We greatly appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for you guys being on the school committee. That's a lot of work. <laughs> All right, do I have a motion to accept the PTO's proposal to print the logo on the color changing cups for June 11th? I'll make the motion. All right, and Mr. Leighton? I'll second that motion. And a roll call vote, please. Mr. Scolombrini? Yes. Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Archambault. Yes. Terrific. That will be great fun. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Um, going on to our next uh, donated days. So, Mr. Cassidy. Mike Cassidy, business manager. I, before you is a, uh, a donated day uh, request uh, from the LEA for your consideration. All right, does anyone have a motion on the donated day request? Mrs. Kelly? Um, I will make a motion to approve up to an additional 20 donated sick days from collective bargaining members for the requesting employee to be used intermittently. Thank you, and second, Mr. Leitman? Second that motion. And a roll call vote then? Mr. Schoolambrini? Yes. Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Archambault? Yes. All right. Moving right along here. ESSER grant budget update. Mr. Cassidy? Good evening, everyone. Mike Cassidy, business manager. At the last school committee meeting, uh, where uh, it was a, uh, an abbreviated group, we uh, felt it would be best uh, to uh, bring this uh, vote to the school committee forward uh, tonight. In the meantime, we uh, po uh, posted uh, our proposed change on our, on our website uh, for public comment, if anyone had any public comment 
or concerns about the transfer. So the, uh, the proposed transfer that is in front of the school committee tonight, and once again, this is a little bit different than like a transfer um, that we do at the beginning of the, the meeting, which is basically local funds. So this I'll be, uh, we'll be amending the ESSER two grant. There's a surplus of funds right now that we're, I'm forecasting at $113,569. And we're, uh, I'm recommending, or the school committee, uh, approve a $60,812 transfer for the continued service of the middle school guidance counselor position, and then uh, $8,000 uh, supporting the nurse supervisor stipend for this school year. With, the, the, with that amount, we still have a balance uh, within the ESSA grant. Uh, so as, as needs uh, come up, um, either through the school committee, the superintendent, or the community, uh, we can, there is some extra money that we can um, allocate for those specific needs. But tonight we're uh, I'm, I'm recommending or uh, proposing, I should say, that uh, it, that would we do those two tra uh, those two transfers in the budget, and I will amend the grant at the DESI level. Okay. Do we have any questions about those um, transfers? No, I, I don't have any questions either. Um, you know the the money needs to be spent and, and this appears to be a good way to spend it. I have no questions about that. Um, then do we have a motion then to accept Mr. Cassidy's um, amended ESSER grant proposal here? Mrs. Kelly? I'll make a motion to accept the amended proposal by Mr. Cassidy. Um, Ms. Shapiro? I'll second that motion. All right. Seeing no questions, we'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Schoolenbrini? Yes. Ms. Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Archambo? Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Now we move on to new business. We're going to pass over um, letter D, the um, employee handbook, and look at that at a later time. And we'll go on to E donations. So this evening we have um, donation uh, in the amount of three dollars and eighty cents from Box Tops for Education, um, and this is going to be deposited in the Turkey Hill Elementary School gift account. The second. Um, in the amount of $34.70, also from Box Tops for Education, also to be deposited in the gift account at Turkey Hill. All right, do I have a motion to accept those donations? Mr. Leighton? Make a motion to accept the Box Top donations with gratitude. And second? Ms. Shapiro? I'll second that motion. All right, then we'll take a roll call vote to accept those. Mr. Schoolenbrini? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. And Mrs. Archambault? Yes. Um, our next topic has to do with an email that I received from um, Elaine Peterson at the town hall and the select board is looking at um, adjusting their or amending their policy on town signage, signage on town property. And we have the entire um, piece in the folder, but the red section, I believe is the new section and it deals with election day. And I will read that. Um, election day exception. 
On any day that the town conducts an election administered by the town clerk, the following policy shall apply. Campaign signs and or ballot question signs may be placed on town property along Massachusetts Avenue and Oak Ave as follows. On Massachusetts Avenue, signage must be located between the driveway to the Lunenburg Public Library and the eastern entrance to the Middle High School parking lot. On Oak Ave, signage must be located within 50 feet of the entrance to the Middle High School parking lot. All signs and rockers must be less than 24 inches tall and 24 inches wide. Metal brackets shall be used to stake signs into the ground and when staked, the tops of the sign shall be less than 40 inches above the ground. Signs may be placed on a first come first serve basis within 10 hours of polls opening and must be removed within two hours of polls closing. Signs shall be placed within 10 feet of the public right of way and cannot obscure the point of view um, to vehicles exiting each parking lot. Thank you, somebody for popping that up there. Each campaign or ballot question is limited to a maximum of 50 signs on town property. Candidates and their supporters may personally hold an unlimited amount of signs, provided that they remain at least 150 feet from the polling place. Prior approval from any town agent is not required. Any sign in violation of this policy will be removed by the town clerk or his or her designee. So that is the um, policy they wanted are okay because obviously um, a lot of this property is school property. Uh, so does anybody have any questions about this? Um, I can't see you. So if you do have questions, jump in. This is Brian Leitman. Uh, I do have some concerns. So under one I and I, I, um, I don't have a concern on I, I, I think that makes a lot of sense on Oak Ave. The signage must be located within 50 feet of the entrance <laughs> of the high school parking lot. I think that makes sense. I would have liked to see something similar on one I. I have concerns with one I where it says on Massachusetts Ave, signage must be located between the driveway to the Lunenburg Public Library and the Eastern entrance to the middle high school parking lot. I feel like there's no distances in there. And I also have concerns that uh, I don't know if you remember this, Carol, too, but like when we were standing out there three years ago, we were on the other side of the driveway um, to the middle high school, not between the, the driveway and the library. I think a lot of people do stand on the other side of the entrance, not at the between the driveway and the library. Some people will stand on that side, but it's not as common. So I had concerns on that. I, I feel like it was better to have uh, 50 feet on both sides. I took that to mean something different. The Eastern entrance to the middle high school parking lot down by the um, football, down by the track, okay. the athletic fields. That first okay. end, That parking feet. lot. Okay. I, I took that to mean that. Um, yeah, that makes Mr. more Franco sense. Mr. Franco is on the call. Mr. Franco, can you um, clarify that? Uh, yes, uh, that is correct. I was going to raise my hand and chime in. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so that is that's exactly right. So that's a pretty long stretch. I mean, that's 700 feet, probably at least. Yeah. So I uh, think because there's two, I, I'm thinking more of the entrance to the high school where I guess the e, e, I missed the eastern entrance part of it. OK, so I think okay. that's clear. I, I don't know if it's clear, but I, I think it makes sense. I think that that would make sense for where science could go. Uh, yeah, I, I OK. Um, and I appreciate the, the, the uh, comment to flesh that out, but it also gives me an opportunity to prove that I'm still here. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> I was counting on that. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, any other questions on this policy or? Does anyone else have any questions about this that Mr. Franco could help us with? That's another question, whether I can help I'm you. Sure. With <laughs> Those are two questions. Yeah. All right. All right Sounds like we're okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right then. Um, with that cleared up, is there do I have a motion to um, approve the addendum to this so we can get it back to the select board? Mrs. Kelly? I'll make a motion to approve this addendum to the town signage. 
And a second. Ms. Shapiro? I'll second that motion. All right then, a roll call vote, please. Mr. Scombrini? Yes. Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. Mrs. Archambault? Yes. So um, should I get back to um, Mrs. Peterson at town hall or can we have Liz do that or how does that work? We can take care of that. Okay. All right, thank you. So now we move on to the superintendent's evaluation. Turn my page. Mr. Franco, do you still have a hand raised about the last thing? Uh, yeah, I just want to thank you for passing that. Uh, that's all. All right, you're quite Perfect. welcome. Thank you for bringing it to us. Okay. Um, the school committee has presented Dr. Burnham with its evaluation of her current school year performance. Before reading the summary portion, I want to explain for anyone watching that the format and procedures used in compiling this document are dictated by the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. The superintendent's evaluation is based on the goals she has worked on throughout the school year. Those goals were approved by the school committee on October 20th, 2021. The superintendent submits artifacts, both written and through presentations to document the work done. Each committee member scores the superintendent against the DESE rubric and submits an evaluation to the chair. The results are compiled and the final evaluation is written. So just so people have an understanding of where this comes from. So, um, what I'm going to do on this, there's two different sections. One is um, progress towards goals. And the second one is um, performance on standards. And then there is a summary um, narrative. So in the area of professional practice goals, um, the school committee states that her First professional practice goal, which let me flip down so I can read it, which ensuring student access to learning, um, that goal was met. The second professional, um, wait a minute, these are in different order. Desi likes to follow us up. Professional practice goal was providing engaging and effective instruction. That goal was met. I'm gonna to have to bounce back and forth here to get them lined up right. The student learning goal was met and that was the one that ensures student access to learning. District improvement goal number one, the importance of school climate. That one falls under significant progress made. And district improvement goal number two, the importance of student behavioral health, that goal was met. Going to the standards, standard number one, instructional leadership. Um, Dr. Burnham was um, found to be proficient. In the area of management and operations, she was found to be proficient. In family and community engagement, we found proficient. And standard number four, professional culture, was also marked as proficient. Her overall rating best, based on step one and step two is proficient. Now the comments are as followed. Dr. Burnham shows strong leadership skills in the school community. She demonstrated exceptional leadership dealing with COVID, the mental health shockwave due to COVID, and strategic use of funds made available to help deal with COVID. In particular, her transition to mask optional schooling serves, deserves commendation for its swiftness, clarity, being open to community feedback, and above all, safety. As we are coming out of the pandemic and are dealing with the effects COVID had on education, we are seeing more behavioral and mental health challenges. In this particular area, 
The district is excelling in recognizing and providing interventions to those who need them. The superintendent established a clear model of tiered supports district-wide to support students academically through intervention and tutoring and emotionally through counseling. The superintendent has identified and procured appropriate instructional and assessment tools through the budget process, provided training for educators, and created a process of evaluating and using data to ensure appropriate use of assessment data in lesson development. This year saw some great work with implementing data cycles using classroom data to determine if it, interventions are needed. The surveys, assessment tools, and analysis of student performance, as well as the addition of a permanent director of teaching and learning and the curriculum cabinet will support the necessary steps forward. The upcoming curriculum changes are important and needed to make sure that our primary and elementary students are prepared for the expectations at higher grade levels. Turkey Hill's continuing performance issues remain a concern, but Dr. Burnham's plans seem well thought out and we look forward to positive results. Changing the climate in the district remains a goal, though much work has been done and continues to be done in this area. We look forward to the upcoming equity audit to assist in this effort. In our ever-changing district, we need to ensure each one of our students feels comfortable and represented in his or her classroom. Overall, the Lunenburg Public Schools are in good hands with Dr. Burnham. More planning, surveys, data collection, professional development, and implementations are needed, but significant progress has been made, and we would recommend placing Dr. Burnham on a two-year evaluation cycle. So that, that is what our compiled evaluation stated. And do I have any committee member that would like to make a comment? Uh, Mr. Schoolambrini? So I, I, I'm new, so I don't know a whole lot, but what I, what I do know from my experience in dealing with schools and unions and administrators in New Hampshire um, I think that Lunenburg is really lucky to have Dr. Burnham here. There, there was, uh, you know, I dealt with probably between 35 and 40 different school districts in New Hampshire. And I can't think of a single administrator that handled the transition to COVID as well as she did and like had the mask mandate carried out correctly and had it communicated well. And I think that, you know, and nothing else could have been possible if there, that, that issue hadn't been dealt with correctly. So, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I think she gets the evaluations, right? Oh yes, yes, she gets. She okay, so like, I, it's not going to be a surprise, but I, I gave her uh, a, a very high rating. I thought, I thought, based on what little I know of Lunenburg, compared to the other places that I've worked, it, it's just it's a remarkable difference, and I think it starts with Dr. Burnham. Thank you, Mr. Schoolambrini, Mr. Leitman. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to go a little different direction. Um, I, I do want to thank uh, Carol for the process and just starting us off right away at the beginning of the year uh, on the process too. It went very smoothly. Also, I want to thank Dr. Burnham too, again, for a smooth process where she outlined a lot of the evidence that we needed to review um, for the goal. So that helped a lot uh, to make the process a lot smoother. Um, I also enjoyed the process myself, being a part of the, the collaboration to put it all together and incorporating the comments. I appreciated that. Um, and I think also as a, as a group, I think this gave us some good ideas on goals for next year for Dr. Burnham. And I think uh, I look forward to that process as well. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Mrs. Kelly? Um, Thank you, Dr. Burnham, for all your work. Um, I think one thing that I appreciated just going from last year to this year was not reviewing the many, many, many <laughs> articles um, and actually watching the presentations. I know some of them were long, but it's really good to get a grasp of what our staff is doing. And so to see some of those presentations and see the work that's actually going on, it really helped. Um, and I'm really looking forward to the work that we're gonna do next year. So thank you again. All right. Anyone else? 
Well, I'm just going to wrap that up by saying that um, we very much appreciate all that you do for us, Dr. Burnham, and for the Lunenburg Public Schools and for our students, um, knowing that they are always the top priority in your mind. So did you have anything you wanted to say about the process or the evaluation or anything else? Um, I think I would concur <laughs> that this year's <laughs> process was a bit more streamlined. I'm glad that you found it helpful. I'm always open to ideas to make the process even better and easier for all of you. I know it's a lot. Um, and as far as goals, uh, I'll be reaching out to, to each of you to have a conversation about uh, your thoughts on priorities for the district um, for, for, uh, for next year's uh, goal setting um, so that I have something to bring back to you early in the, in the fall. Um, and I just want to thank you all for the, the comments, um, very much appreciated. And um, I've said this before, but I will say it again. Um, it really is a, a pleasure to, um, to work with the team and um, be a part of a governance team that really does feel very team-like. <laughs> um, so I thank you all for that. Um, so I'll be reaching out and we'll be having more conversation about next year. Awesome, I look forward to that. Thank you. All right, so now it is time for public comments open to any topic governed on, by the school committee. And I am not seeing any hands raised. So I'm thinking that we will move on. The first would be um, reports would be the athletic advisory committee. We are meeting on June 6th at 7 p.m. in person at the high school. All right. And um, the finance committee, they met on April 28th. Uh, there was much discussion about the capital plan. Mr. Beardmore and Mr. Passios had met with town council regarding amending the capital plan on town meeting floor. The town council sent felt it would be up to the moderator um, if monies were cut, allocating funds from the capital plan uh, are at the discretion of the town manager. None of that happened because the, town, the capital plan did pass. Um, once again, there were comments regarding um, the opportunities to combine positions in the community where we can, like the facilities positions. Their next meeting, is going to be um, tomorrow evening um, on the 19th. So that's that report and PTO, they had elections, but I did not find out who was elected. So I will have to do that. And moving on to school councils, were there any councils that met rather than call everybody? Yeah, the primary school we met uh, last Monday. Uh, mostly to review the handbooks, um, mostly just cleaning up language. Uh, we did discuss uh, the dress code and just to try to align it more with the, the school policy. So I thought um, Megan Arnold and Principal Adams were great at uh, trying to clean up the language there. And I think it's going to be uh, hopefully better as we get into the next handbook. Uh, also, the, they're going back to walk-up days again. So hopefully the, the primary school will be walking up to the visiting the Turkey Hill uh, they're also planning an all school field day. And then they're also going to have a vice principal for the day that gets to hang out with Mr. Adams and make a lot of the decisions. So that'd be exciting. Sounds like fun. Any other school council meet? Okay. Um, I'm assuming capital planning did not meet or the wellness advisory committee. Um, Paxel did meet, but um, Mrs. Kelly, did you find out anything? I, I have the meeting minutes are posted to the Paxel site. Um, a, Mrs. Hanscom had posted that Desi was coming out to Lunenburg this week. Um, Zoom time limits are going to go down to 40 minutes after June 30th. So for next year, we're going to need to transition over to Google Meets for our IEP meetings. Um, the IET department said that other districts use Google Meets for IEP meetings. Um, it has the same or better security than Zoom. Um, if parents have a concern, we can certainly meet in person. 
Uh, the new phone system at TCP Special Services Office Extension is extension 5213. Uh, Juliana Hanscom's extension is 5223 in case anyone's trying to reach them. Um, she also has a resource on the website, a link uh, for families that has a hand in creating, oh, sorry, they had a hand in creating, it's um, the infos for diversity, equity and inclusion in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So there's a link that um, families can access on there. And that is all I'm releasing for minutes. All right, thank you very thank much. You. And uh, Lunenburg Municipal Building Design Committee. Yes, so we met on May 16th. Uh, we had the school committee visit us for the uh, first part of it. Uh, we also have uh, APDC representative, Tony Scalambrini, senior. That was exciting to see him there too. Um, one of the big things with the, the building design committee in the schools is the concern that as we potentially renovate TCP or use TCP or possibly tear it down, this concerns that the usage, school usages right now of the TCP building um, might be not a long-term solution, long-term option. So the committee is very concerned about uh, feasible alternatives and knowing and making sure that the school is able to come up with feasible alternatives. So that was a lot of the focus. Um, Turkey Hill and potentially having Turkey Hill have add-ons to, to take in some of those um, uses that are currently at TCP um, and finding more permanent homes uh, in the future. Um, we also reviewed the Vertex and TAPE reports. Um, there was discussion about capital planning being involved in the process because a lot of these buildings need to be renovated and updated. Um, and also having a, a, a new facilities director who can also prioritize maintenance of these buildings as well. Um, there was also discussion about how in the, cap the current capital plan that was just approved, that there was funding for um, public records and digitizing them and saving some space. So that will also potentially save some space in a future town hall where we don't need to renovate or, or get new space that's gonna cost a lot of money where we can use storage and save storage space so that we're not building new storage space in a new building. Um, there was also discussion about using the police or fire department for storage as well. Our next meeting is on June 6th. Thank you very much. Um, lifelong learning, I assume that didn't meet. Nope. Uh, policy subcommittee. We have not met. Okay. Um, MASC workshop report. I have no reports. I didn't. Um, I didn't watch the ESSER funding. I, to be honest, I didn't really prioritize it because I feel like we have a very good handle on the ESSER funding, so I wasn't overly concerned with it. So I didn't do that. Um, so I think that's it on committee reports and topics for future discussion. Um, we have down engaging parents, uh, Turkey Hill and the insecticide issue. And I, I had a question at the end of our meeting um, with the municipal building committee about records. Now, I assume that the state dictates how long you have to keep certain records and what has to be in print and what has to be digitized. Um, are we up to date on, I mean, with everything else that goes on, I don't know how in the world somebody could prioritize making sure that stuff that needs to be shredded is shredded and stuff. I, I know I can't do it with my income tax, Never mind thinking of all the things that you have to keep track of. Is that something that we can talk about that we can help with or, or where are we at with that? Um, we do periodically go through and determine things that can be shred. Um, that was something that um, primarily Liz is the one that will go mm -hmm. through and move records that need to be moved um, to shred. And um, Mr. Londa would be the one that would arrange for a company to come in to pick up the material for shredding. Um, we certainly could explore uh, costs for digitizing. 
um, some of the records. Um, we can certainly uh, bring that back, more additional information on that at a future meeting. Yeah, well, we're there talking about space and, and space about records. And I know that you have to keep so many records. And it, I just didn't know if there was a way we could take whatever the square footage that we had said we needed when they were planning to put everything in the last remodel of plans for TCP, if there was a way to cut down on that amount of space. I don't know, just asking. So if we could talk about that at some point, that might be helpful. It may be good to have that at our next meeting with the town manager, if the town manager wants to add in her piece of it, because I know she has like, she knows the records that can and can't be and the equipment that they have. Um, and also they mentioned that they were spending like $62,000 on the town side to go through the records. You know, if that's something that we may need to put into some, I don't know, like I can't see that in our budget, but I don't know how it would be funded, but maybe there's, could there be an earmark or a grant or something to help? I don't know. I mean, I don't want to spend $50,000 at the cost of something that children need for records. That doesn't seem appropriate to me, but if there was a way to, um, to hone down on the amount. It'd be good to know too, because I know school records are definitely different than town records, so what the requirements are. That would be good to for sure. Okay, is there anything else for our next meeting or two? All right. Um, we were going to include um, meeting format as well at our next meeting. I think that's it then. Um, the last item in our meeting this evening is executive session to discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual or to discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual. So can I, yes. I'll make a motion to go into executive session and adjourn, adjourn, adjourn our meeting at following. Is there a second? I will second that. All right, fine. Then a roll call vote, please. Mr. Scolombrini? Yes. yes. Ms. Shapiro? Yes. Mrs. Kelly? Yes. Mr. Leighton? Yes. And Mrs. Archambeau? Yes, I see a question from Mr. Franco before we go. Uh, uh, sorry, I don't know if I zoned and missed the public comment, the second public comment. Did, did I, you, or am I taking? You did zone and miss that, but you know what? Oh. I'll let you, I'll let you jump in before we go to executive session. My apologies, my apologies. It's, it's, um, I just, uh, as you know, at the April 27th meeting, I had requested the, uh, the naming or the memorial policy for the school uh, side. I just want to thank uh, Dr. Burnham for, get it, for Burnham for getting that right out. Uh, it was apparently sent on the 29th, but due to email migration issues, the select board members didn't actually receive it. Not your fault at all. We're switching over to new email system. So we had to have the town manager forward, forward it to us last evening. So we have it now and thank you very much. That's all right, all. thank you. All right, then we will resume into executive session, not to return to public session. Therefore, we would ask if anyone is not involved in the executive session, if they would leave the meeting. Thank you. We shut off the recording, sir. Mm -hmm.